with all the giant cakes and stuff, and like this is the first yeah. meetup. It, it'll be something to put, you know. In the, <laughs> this is how things used to be, kids. Well, yeah, and imagine totally. how avatars will look in a few years. Like oh, this is we're gonna these are like, early days, and we're gonna look at yeah, back we're at gonna these look dorky. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Monica. Oh, Starbucks cup. Hey there. Hello. Yeah, so there are selfie like... sticks uh, scattered around. Feel free to grab one if you're in the headset. You can't use them from desktop, unfortunately, but from the headset okay. you can pick up mm -hmm. the selfie sticks. I think maybe while we're waiting, just so that uh, we have enough time, um, do we want to do quick introductions? I see some familiar faces, but it couldn't hurt to reintroduce ourselves, and then as people come in, we can grab them. But uh, how does everyone feel about that? Sure. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Well, since I voluntold everybody, <laughs> I will go first. Hey, <laughs> um, okay, like it. All right. <laughs> uh, my name is Leslie. I am an instructional designer. I'm just finishing up my, or kind of halfway through my fourth week at Transfer, um, formerly known as Transfer VR, so I feel like I can officially call myself an immersive instructional designer now. <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. been a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I, I did post in the job board on, on our Slack channel, they are still looking for instructional designers, so people want to, you know, throw their name in the hat and the, yeah. And follow that opportunity. I'll I'm happy to check to that out when we're that. done. Yeah. Um, so I'm passing the um, hold on. I'm passing the, the toasted sandwich to Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Our, our talking sandwich. So my name is Kimberly Go. Um, I am a. I was previously a, an e-learning developer, but now I do uh, interactive video. So that's kind of my specialty. Still freelance. And, um, you know, the I, I'm just I'm interested in VR because I know it's the future. So that's kind of why as soon as I saw this, I'm like, I've got to, you know, get there, get my headset and, you know, just start playing with it. Uh, the one place that I'm currently using VR a lot right now is it, I do Supernatural, which is the fitness app. And I oh, love yeah. that. That is. Yeah. Oh, has anyone else tried that? That is like the yeah. best. Show I, have, yeah. I just love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's in fact, I did like a quick hits thing right before I got here. Ten minutes. And when you sit in front of your. Yeah, when you sit in front of your computer all day, you know how that is? It's like you're just like yeah. sitting there. Mm -hmm. So I was mm -hmm. like, I've got to do something, you know, to get active. So that was my thing. Um, but other than that, I'm here to learn from you guys. Um, I do more, like right now I'm, I'm creating an online course on, um, on how to do branching scenarios. So that's my thing that I'm working on currently and then otherwise just, you know, traditional, you know, client projects and stuff. But I'm super glad to be here, and I love this because this is like – this is kind of like my place to hang out with real people, right? You're all so real. So <laughs> this, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, i got to pass the sandwich. Let's see. I will pass. Oh, I don't really know how to <laughs> see if I can just. Tricia, are you up for? I don't know if she's on. Are you on, Tricia? You want to, like, talk? She's not. Okay, great. Here, you get. There's a there's the talking sandwich. <laughs>
Hi. Sounds good. Hi. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I, can, can, can you all hear me? All right. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yep. We can yeah. hear you. Oh, okay. can hear you. Hi, my name is Anil. Um, how should I introduce, I guess? Because currently I'm not working. So I used to work before, but currently I'm on a medical leave. Uh, and at the same time, exploring the side of the PR and also the instructional design. So instructional design is new to me, but I did work as a project manager for Bad VR, which is uh, a company that was working on making data visualization in VR. So I have sort of like some knowledge of VR, I guess, uh, more of a project side, but I'm really interested in the instructional design. So yeah, glad to be here and learning from you all. Glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I think I'm from I'm joining from the computer side. I don't know if I can pass the the oh, talking I can, sandwich, I guess. I can help you. Kevin, All right, thank do you, you. wanna go ahead? Do you want the, the talking sandwich? <laughs> sure I'll talk. I'm still trying to figure out how to turn around. <laughs> 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 I don't look at it the So I have my granddaughter, she's like the real pro. So uh, I just see all the stuff that's with the uh, XR and VR, and I just get really excited about it and, uh, and all the possibilities. I'm a, an IV2 and uh, just trying to have some fun here, see where it all leads. That sounds good. We're glad you can make it. Oh, I guess I'm next. I'll pass the talking this way. All right. Hi, everyone. I am Kristen Torrance. Hello. I um, also, uh, you know, a co-moderator of this uh, learning community. I currently am a learning engineer at Tailspin, where I primarily uh, help design and develop virtual reality solutions for hard and soft skills, but mostly soft skills recently. Um, and before that, I was a learning experience designer in, in K-12, uh, designing like, educational games and like blended learning programs for kids. Uh, really excited to be here and so thrilled that everyone is part of the community. <laughs> All right, Susan, here you go. Yay. Oh, yeah, that didn't go very far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Susan Woodard. I am um, currently getting into instructional design after teaching for 11 years and um, just got finished. I'm excited for tonight. Um, I just got done and graduated from the um, VR World Building class from Universe, so I'm excited to see a fellow Universe hey. person. Awesome. Congrats. Congratulations. Um, and I'm really excited to be getting into the um, XR world with instructional design. So thank you, Leslie, for the, the tip on jobs available. That was me. I think we missed Lauren, if okay. we want to pass it this way. Sorry about that. Oh, Lauren, Lauren. sorry. Go. Oh, am I are we handling over a sandwich? <laughs> yes, this is our talking, talking sandwich. sandwich. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just came in. Um, this is my first time here, and thanks to Susan, actually, because I saw her posted on LinkedIn. Um, I yay. am, yay! <laughs> I, um, so for the last year, I've tra kind of been transitioning into learning experience design and started working on this startup, um, an XR learning marketplace called Global XR Academy, and Hopefully Susan will join us uh, on that. And we're just trying to create um, learning experiences, courses that are offered through XR. And um, mm -hmm. we're looking for people who are, you know, interested in creating content and um, offering learning experiences. Uh, but prior to this 
um, adventure. I've my background is in education. I've been teaching in higher ed, um, abroad, uh, teaching English as a second language. But I decided to kind of um, put all of that background towards something, something different and exciting. Yay. 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 My head says I'm gonna step away for a second. I'll be right back. Hi Jay. Oh there you go, Jay, if you if you would like to introduce yourself. Thing. Um I've been an instructional designer for a number of years. For a company that focuses mostly on um, skilled trades and industrial training and technologies like aerospace and so forth. So there's a lot of variety, but uh, basically I, I get to do a number of things actually. I do get to write storyboards and design documents as well as some development too, some design and development that side of things. I have some experience in Unity, using Unity to build some educational simulations and you could say like gamified educational simulations because that's essentially what they are, you know, so um, that's sort of the gist of it. I Like for example today I was actually working on a more uh, traditional 3D at this point, but um, yeah, I mean, I have a passion with VR as well, VR and uh, different XR technologies, and it's definitely the current and future of training, I would say, because it's so successful. So um, I think that's all I had. I, I, uh, I'm I glad to be here tonight, and I like this, this fire. It makes it feel really cozy. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. Like we're camping out. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> it's cozy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very cozy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, let's see. <laughs> I feel like someone got missed. You'd be su um, you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> yes, I went, Chris. If you don't mind, I'm gonna pass it to Monica because I think I missed her because she was behind. Sounds me great. Yeah. Originally. Hi. Um, hi everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in Michigan mm -hmm. right now. We're yes. under. A, ice storm right now so my connection's been a little bit funky oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah it's okay it's michigan um so <laughs> i'm an instructional designer for the university of michigan and specifically for the school of public health um i've been there for about a year and a half um and i've always had a passion also for xr technology especially vr um, in my previous life i was a cognitive psychology researcher and um, did some research in 3d and motion perception using vr technologies um, but uh, I do find that in my learning experience design work that VR has a lot of potential, so I'm really excited by bringing those opportunities um, to the online education field. So I mainly work in the online education area, um, and I'm just really excited to kind of bring those technologies there. Yeah. Awesome. Great to hear your experience. Hello. I Thanks. will put this back by the fire. Um, should I be passing this nice to and toasty again? <laughs> I think that was everyone. I but I'm on a laptop, so it'll probably be hard for me to make it to. <laughs> um, so I will pass it over to Chris. And um, Chris, I would say for time, if you feel comfortable, maybe 7.35-ish. Okay. All right. Person. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Sorry, everyone. That's I know. Okay. I can't do it. Okay. Well, and thank you, I'll everybody. You. All right, thanks a lot. And I, Chris, if I may ask you to um, stand closer to your presentation for, for oh, video purposes, sure, that would no be problem. awesome. Thank All you right. very much. Oh, Appreciate of course. It. Of course, no problem. 
So first of all, I'd like to say thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share what I've been doing. I first had my I first got into VR with the PlayStation VR um, and kind of graduated to the Quest. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more, but I wanted to share my presentation. I have a true passion for teaching, uh, learning, lots of things. I've been uh, into music production, VR. Um, I took all of the universe classes with Nicholas Barone. He's fantastic. I was in his, the first class to go through. So I've completed all the courses. Can't wait for the Blender course to start soon. But um, <laughs> I just want to show you what I've been up to. I recently opened January 30th a, an XR VR, like digital makerspace for students at the high school. But um, I work in the Wego Applican School District in New York. But let me get into that. I'm going to start off with how I've changed what the classroom looks like for my students. So I'll play this quick video. I have posted this video, so you may have seen it on LinkedIn. But let me um, go ahead and continue to test the, the audiovisual capabilities of spatial. So here we go. I'm going to mm -hmm. share my screen. And put it in motion. Of course, it's not, hold on a second. Back. Hmm. Okay, let me, let's try a different tact here. Stop sharing, share screen. So I've noticed that you can share your audio. Leslie and I tested it out earlier. I was playing some music. Let's hope it works now. Okay. Start there. So can you see my Google Drive folder screen? No. No. Not yet. Not yet. Nothing is showing up? Oh, no. Okay. All right. Well, let me go to... Can you see an agenda? Oh yeah. Yep. Yes. Now I see that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll start off with this, and then I'll try the uh, the audio visual in a second. So basically, I, I'm a special education teacher, and uh, I'm a consultant teacher, a special ed um, director for the school district, and I also handle um, technology integration. Uh, during the closure, I trained most of the staff on who, how to use Zoom and start breakout rooms and things like that. But basically, I'm going to talk about who I am. I'll, I'll try to keep it short because I don't have a lot of time. Um, I'll talk about a bit of what I've done so far, how this led to the XR Lab, the digital makerspace. And if we have time, we'll talk about how I keep life in balance and work on long-term projects. So I live in New York now. Um, I went to Buffalo State for my undergrad and got my master's through Elmira College. I've taught on both coasts in California. That's where I first taught in um, a town called Vacaville. Moved to New York, and I'm right now in Owego, New York. And we have a, a Lockheed Martin division here, and this will lead into my first um, step into you know presenting online material. So I, I have some friends who are uh, engineers for Lockheed Martin, and they came to me and said, Chris, um, our daughter is struggling with the Common Core math. So I thought, okay, there must be something I can do. So I got together with um, an electrical engineer friend of mine, and we, we created worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com, which um, we do video walkthroughs, and we do uh, printables to go with it, worksheet generators, things like that. And also, um, more recently, I had another challenge. I, some of the people in the school district were saying, well, we're having students trouble with having trouble with basic mathematical foundational skills. It's um, not only for special education students, but for students across the district. And there's they're moving to the middle school. And um, I created a program where the students learn their multiplication facts with multiples. So it it, it was a funny story. I I was uh, working with some students in fifth grade, and they came to me and said knowing there are multiples of three, and I'm curious as how they did, and they all knew a song. And I said, how'd you know that? And they told me that um, their teacher, Carol, uh, my friend Carol, taught them. So I went to talk to Carol, and she said, she showed me this tape. 
So she had a cassette tape. I don't know if anybody <laughs> is familiar with those, but those are pretty um, ancient. But not only that, the recordings were of from a vinyl record recorded on the, the cassette tape. But what I noticed is that it worked. So mm -hmm. I created, um, I studied digital music produce, production, and I'm a digital music producer now as well. And I created multiple songs, and I was um, recruited by Oigo App Lake and Schools, and they brought me over. And so, like I said, I was created um, multiple songs for the students. I'm going to try to play video for you to show you some of that. Is somebody moving the screen? Uh oh. Did I do that? Let me. Is that you? Is it you? I'm not sure. I'm going to try to put it back where it belongs and I'm going to. Hey, I didn't mean to move. I thought it was on me. That's okay. We'll lock it in. That's okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm try, I'll try again to share the Chrome tab. Can anyone see the Chrome tab? Yeah. It's the Baker of Man. Baking multiples by the dozen. I'm now hot and fresh. From the oven, it's a dozen that I'm loving. 12, 24, 36. 48, 60, 72. 84, I think you're on mute. Okay. You're muted, Chris. You're on mute. Oh, you're muted. Chris, you're on mute. Oh, I wonder if the... There you okay. go. Okay. There we go. I was muted. So the, I'm fortunate enough to work with some great people, and they adopted the songs in the third grade, and it's been a few years now. So now the, the students all know the songs. They're very fluent in their mathematics, and they've um, moved to the top in the region in mathematics, and they're... Wow. they're um, achievement tests or the state assessments. So I'm going to go back to my other screen. Sorry about the delay. Okay. All right. But it does. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks a lot. Can everyone see the the screen again with the? Uh... Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. So I designed these songs purposely with brain science in mind, and I've uh, one of the resources I used was This Is Your Brain on Music, and I've also into the. Uh, movements across the midline of the body where you, the students uh, do crossover motions while they're singing the songs and this causes new connections to ma be made across the corpus callosum in the brain and also music is tied into the limbic system so that ties into emotion uh, a lot of times when you listen to music you feel the, the definite emotions that the artist wants to purvey to you but it also is tied into long, long term memory. So that's I kind of keyed into those and I used um, digital audio workstations to produce the music. But I really, I know I'm running out of time. So but then um, not long comes, I wanted to get my dog in here. That's my dog on music. Uh, and her name is Addie. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> the uh, instructional designers. Yeah, I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> it's Addie without the E, okay? <laughs> anyway so like i said along came vr Chris, i'm sorry sorry to interrupt i would say 
you can disregard what I said about time. If you have a lot more content, I think people are more hap more than happy to hear it. So just, I don't want you to feel okay. rushed if you have more time. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. So I got into VR. That's probably most of you here. When you put the headset on, it changes changed everything for me. I was just totally just immersed, you know, uh, literally, figuratively, I thought, wow, this this is the future. So I, I took the, uh, then I got the Oculus Quest, and I decided um, I wanted to move the, the multiple songs into VR. So my first dip into VR was actually with, with a game called O-Shape. With O-Shape, all you can get on the Quest can get an editor for the Quest, and you can actually put your own music, and it, it's time-consuming, and you can you make these walls that fit through as you're playing the game. So let me show another video. Hopefully this one will work too. Doing the movements uh, along with the music, breaking through walls, trying to fit through the shapes. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. But I really wanted to do more. So along came the... Um... Oh, fun. Sorry for the delay, but it keeps switching back and forth. Yeah. So then the pandemic hit, and it really couldn't get the, head, the students in the headset anymore. So, you know, it was like wondering what to do. And while I was in the pandemic, it was when you couldn't do anything. You were washing your groceries, and you were afraid to, to go outside, kind of. And I was thinking, okay, I'm going to reach out and see what's available in VR. So what I did was I looked into alt space. And, um, and this is the reason why I do drawings with my presentations. This is a book called Draw to Win by Dan Loam, where it shows you how effective it, it is to do simple drawings to per, convey your ideas in a quick and understandable manner. But back to alt space. So I went to a, Re a Reggie Watts concert in alt space. I'm not sure if any of you know who he is, but he's a comedian, um, a digital music producer. Uh, uh, he does looping. and He's just hilarious. So I went to the concert. I'm like, oh my gosh. At the whole world's on shutdown, and I am in VR going to concerts. A game changer completely. So I thought, okay, what else is available on Alt Space? So I checked out Universe, Learn Unity in VR. So I thought, wow, I'll check this out. So I signed up with Nicholas's courses, and I, I know there's some other alum here tonight, but I was sold. I said, this is it. This is the future of education. So I thought immediately I wanted to bring my students and our school into VR, into the metaverse. So that, that was my goal. So I, I took, you know, took the courses in the closure. I, you know, was making connections all over the world, meeting great people. Um, I did meet somebody from um, Bad VR, Justin Chow, and I'm, I'm not sure if you know, one of our audience members used to work at Bad VR. But um, I made lots of connections and I, I I shared this presentation with the Board of Education with uh, administrators in my district, including the, the drawings. I shared my idea for the, the space. I wanted to redesign the, the learning space for students. So this is the basically, this is what I presented to them. And this is actually how my VR classroom, my VR lab, XR lab is set up now with the, uh, my desk is in the middle and I have students around me. And, uh, we designed together in, in VR. When I put the um, administrator in the headset, he couldn't believe it. He was blown away. He's like, Chris, what do you need to make this happen here? So I took him to my base of Verity World. That's, that's why I have this shown here, which is in all space. You can check it out sometime. I can, I'll put a link to it. But then he asked me, what is your path? There is no path. The metaverse is really being built. I said, I'll have to make my, I have to make my own path, basically. So one of my mantras in life in general is if I'm working on new projects, is if, if it is to be, it's up to me. So I went through all these steps to design the lab. I, went through, I had to do the purchase order, plan the network of IT, meet with the principals from two different buildings to plan it out about space and my schedule so I could work between buildings. Um, design delivery, uh, design the curriculum and deliver the curriculum. I had to make those decisions. Plan with guidance. Um, I had to choose which educational management system I went with. For some reason, my M fell off there. But 
I chose to use Google Classroom to um, you know, communicate with my students. And I also use uh, uh, Discord as well to communi communicate daily with my students so they know what to expect. Um, my, our main goal is to teach the students unity, um, to become versed in XR, which includes VR um, and AR at this point. I'm just developing an AR course right now. And I use this this book. I totally recommend it. I'm not sure if people have heard of this before. It's called The Art of Game Design. Yeah, by Jesse, Jesse Shell. But yes, by Jesse Shell. Absolutely. He's mm -hmm. the uh, yeah, he's the founder of Shell Games. And if you've ever played I Expect You to Die or I think was it Christia you did Till You Fall or I think that's what it is. They did another game like that. Fast, fantastic game company. But if you're interested in the lenses that they use, is they look at designing um, games through different lenses throughout the book. And there's a free app that's available on iPhone, on your iPhone, or I think it's available on Android, Android as well. But it uh, lists all the lenses, and you can uh, just kind of view your projects through the lenses. And that's I do use that with my students. We talk. We have design discussions. Uh, we meet in VR uh, on a semi-weekly basis, talk about game design, where we are, where we want to go. We're always always reiterating. I'm trying to uh, communicate with the students to change the curriculum to meet the needs that they want. So it's really turned into a digital maker space where you can do audio design. Um, I have an artist who she wants to work on 3D models, so we're working on that as well. And of course, C Sharp and Unity. This is a picture of me. In, in this whole process, is if, if you've gone through a process of making something happen from scratch, there's a lot of there's constant communication uh, back and forth and lots of delays. So I started the whole process in May, and the lab opened in January of this year. This was a good day. I was in the in the lab, and all the quests came in. I have 16 mm -hmm. Oculus Quests and uh, 15 gaming PCs. I'll set up uh, pretty future proof for a while at least. So there, are, there's the uh, intro to game design, and also we're, we're running pretty close on time right now. But for me, um, keeping life, life in balance is huge. So at home, I, I uh, spend time with my wife and I, and we have a son. And I also balance work. And one of the th key things I think you play to your strengths so at work you know I, I bring I'll bring music in because that's I'm very interested in music gaming so I, I use uh, gamification as well and also one thing that, that I helps me is the job is not me and that's tough I've gotten lost in that cycle of thinking the job is me but that's a, that's another story for another another day but I continuously learn and follow your bliss is one thing I believe in also changing the channel so I spent a lot of time working on projects but, but uh, change the channel to get out to exercise. I, I'm a runner. Also, you know, I get into music. I create music, and also gaming is a, a release for me. So when you do that, your your brain is all always parallel processing. And I got that from Leonard Mladenov. He is a, a polymath. He wrote this book called Elastic, and it really emphasizes elastic thinking in a time of change. And we've all gone gone through big. Uh, time of change with the pandemic, and now um, with the metaverse coming, it seems like everything is changing. Oh, that, I found that book helpful. Helpful. So when you're doing the parallel processing, you're changing the channel. A lot of times, in you have those eureka moments where suddenly you're like, "Ah, oh, there's the solution to my problem." It just comes to you. And um, he's done the he's uh, done the science behind the research and science behind it to see what's happening. Uh, that's what's going on. Your brain's doing parallel processing, and poof, there it is. He gives uh, examples of famous people, but I won't get into that. Um, a lot of times, I, when I'm approaching long-term projects, I really um, go back to this book by Haruki Murakami, and he talks about how a novelist has to approach uh, long-term projects like a marathon. But anyhow, as a runner, I found that really helpful. So, also, one last thing I want to talk about with the book, draw to win. If you use simple shapes, they have they represent different 
meanings. Like with with the the triangle, it's really times of change. So putting yourself, it's kind of when they talk about putting yourself in the un, you know getting out of your comfort zone. That's kind of what I try to do. Um, I guess that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm doing here tonight. So public speaking has always been kind of like a scary thing for me. But anyhow, so like I said before, my mantra is if it is to be, it's up to up to me. So let me share a couple more bits of video. I'll just show you. Um, actually, do you mind if I test out one thing really quick? Please do. Yeah, go. Okay. And you're doing great, by the way. So thank you for coming out of your comfort zone and sharing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it didn't sound a little jittery here and there. But anyhow, so what I tried to do is actually share um, an all space world. So I'm going to show you the last, the latest thing I've been working on for my students. Like I said, I share in different worlds in all space. So my latest one, get it going in the background as I'm talking. So another thing you can do, I've noticed with spatial, if you share your, go to share your screen, you can actually share the entire screen or just a window. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do right now. So I'm going to open up my alt space screen. Hopefully you can see it. Yes, can everybody can. see alt space? Yep. Mm -hmm. We can okay. see it. Yep. Okay. So this is the first world I've, I've had spotlighted in um, alt space. So I'm going to take you there. So this is um, a great place to go if it's a cloudy day or cold. Like this morning, it was 17 degrees. So I created this with oh. just with assets I found on. Can everybody see this? Wow. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to turn on actually turn on flying so I can fly around a little bit. I mean, Mm -hmm. It kind of does, yeah. <laughs> Let me. Uh... Oh yeah. So this is actually. If, if are there any Mario Kart for fans out there? This is a from a Mario Kart mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Luigi's Mansion there. <laughs> there's some. Ah, there's the castle, and then um, this is the raceway. But anyways. So the point is, nowadays with the metaverse, my classroom can be anywhere, okay? Which I'm sure you, everybody is um, realizing these days. But so I can take my students here. We share our projects. I haven't shared in this one yet because I just made it the other night. But um, you can bring in this screen where you can just share any of your. You have to use Microsoft Edge, but you can use any of your. Edge browsers to uh, show the students. Hmm. So I've got more, but I think I'm going to stop right there. Close this out. Back to home. Did, um, does anyone, I definitely want to have space if anyone wants to ask any questions specifically about this okay. project or anything. But thanks, thank you again for um, allowing me to share what I've been doing. This has been fantastic. Oh, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, thank, well, thank you very you. much. Oh, thanks a lot. And I'd appreciate any feedback. I mean, as instructional designers, now, this is my first time really taking a new course is from scratch, building it, designing it. If you have any tips, I'd I be open to any suggestions. I have a question for you about the song that you, this, the songs that you created for the math. Um, have you beyond? Has it gone much beyond your own school district? Have have other educators been interested, or have you made it available in any other way? The, the it's available for free on the the worksheet. 
you mentioned uh, called worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com. Mm -hmm. Anybody can use them. I've had people ask me, can I share this with my friends in you know, down south in North Carolina? I said, absolutely. So that's what I made it for is just to help students. Like, and it really does level the playing field. And I, I do have one more story that I love to share. We had, I have I had a fifth grader with autism, and, and he you know, would appear to be in his own world um, it, you know, most times during the class, class period. So what I do with the multiple songs at the beginning of the year, I'll, I'll have a challenge for them. I call it Sweet Perfection. And if they can recite one of the multiples that we work on that week, then you know, they, get to, they come up in front of the class, form it, they can sing it, say it, whatever they want to do, as long as they know the multiples. Um, you know, they get a, a little, a, just a little treat, just something sweet. But um, when it came time for, well, I obviously can't say his name, but when it came, it came time for him to come up to the front of the class, he just opened up um, and he was singing and excited. And the whole class just burst into it. Like they were standing up and cheering for him. It was the, the greatest thing. So that, that's, why, that's why I do these things. So absolutely, if you know anybody that wants, um, is struggles with math or interested in building a different framework for math, because it really builds into math fluency in division, um, fractions, fractions as division. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's an astonishing it's project. When I listened to, to the kids singing it, it reminded me of the way Schoolhouse Rock was, for you know, those of you who mm -hmm. remember Schoolhouse Rock. I mean, that was the I know way exactly. that we learned, yeah. rock is the right? Best. And yeah. the fact that it had such a broad, um, you know, I mean, it was on TV and everybody just watched it because there was nothing else to watch in those days. But um, I, I would encourage you, if you can find a way, I don't know, promoting it isn't exactly the right word, but like finding some kind of a broader platform if there's some educator out there that already has, you know, I think of like Bill Nye, the science guy kind of person. If there's someone out there that you could partner with mm -hmm. and get your stuff onto their show, I think that would be oh. fabulous because you could help a lot of people with that. That would be a dream. I just, I, I am just blown away. You know, kids will, like, we have this uh, festival in December in my town, and kids will just start singing the songs as they sing. <laughs> yeah. A little wow. embarrassing for my son, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. You might even yeah. consider starting, like, a TikTok channel or something. I think you'd get a lot of traction. Oh, that would be huge. You know, oh Kristen, I, I saw, Kristen, I saw your, uh, your TikTok video. That was fantastic. <laughs> It was Thank really, you know, quick to the point and just, that's fantastic. So that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you on TikTok, Chris. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to come up with some math moves again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah, you have to do the TikTok dances. That's a whole genre of yeah. TikTok, and you just do that's your math right. dances. Yeah. That would take off, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> And you already just said your name, Math Moves. There you go. <laughs> math Moves, yeah. Um, you've got a whole um, marketing and strategy team at your back, Chris. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just remember, Chris, that we were the ones who helped launch your career as a influencer. <laughs> a math influencer. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, this is exciting. Um, it's great to share, you know, it's just, yeah, the more people know about the songs, the better, but you know, thank you, like, I can't thank you guys enough for uh, giving me the chance to kind of show this off. Yeah, you're doing I'm, really I'm curious about what you're work. doing. Yeah. Thank you. I'm cool. curious, Chris, um, how, so I know you gave, um, you kind of pitched this to your district. Ha, have you had mm -hmm. a class uh, a, a class go through like a whole semester yet, or where are you in your your launch process? Um, have you gone gone through a whole we cohort are, yet with your students? No, I have not. We're almost ten weeks in. I wanted to show some of their projects, but I, I don't have time for that. Um, but basically, they're doing you know what we did in Universe, uh, the Unity projects, the Unity Learn. We're doing mm -hmm. that. But we do a lot of modifications along the way. Mm. Yeah, so I'm in the first first semester of it, almost 10 weeks through. So they're just about to build their own alt space worlds. 
just so cool. they're so excited. Yeah, it's it's great. I have students sharing their their work with friends in Holland and, and all over the place. It's it's pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah, you've really given them. You've opened up a whole new dimension of self-expression for them. So that's that's so cool. Thank you. All right. Well, I know well, you guys. I know you have. You want to talk about the design challenge? I think the yes, stage is warm yes, enough. One more round of applause. Woohoo! Woo well, that was we great. Did, Thank you. Yeah. Good job. We we did want to reserve just a few minutes here towards the end of just revisiting the design challenge and maybe even um, kind of if since we are. A, a group of people in the room, um, maybe even just sort of like speed, what's the word I'm looking for, Tristia, Kristen, help me, <laughs> like kind of workshopping, like what this design could jam? look like, yeah, a jam, yeah, thank you, <laughs> design jam, if people are interested in maybe having a conversation about, you know, what this could look like, maybe get some inspiration if you were thinking of of submitting something on your own. Did everyone know about the design? Yeah. So um, is there anything that we might be able to provide for the next design challenge that might help, you know, guide, streamline, encourage, motivate anyone to participate? Um, just curious, you know, if, if there's anything we can do on our end, either provide templates or examples or really anything. Um, cause we, we definitely want to, um, you know, We'll encourage the community to participate um, and make it as easy as possible for, for everyone to participate as well. I was just going to say if there are examples, um, you said, you, someone mentioned like submissions have already been provided. I would be curious to like, yeah, examples are mm -hmm. always helpful. Thanks. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point.
Kristen. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to get to the next page. Hold on. Get over there. Sure, oh, yes. Did I mess so this the, up? And, no, that, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. oh. the, the initial page was, uh, or the initial prompt was, what does micro-learning look like in XR? You know, any sort of micro-learning experience. Um, and we r recognized that that was pretty broad, and so we wanted to, you know, for, for those that need um, some more guardrails, such as myself, I was like, okay, um, it'd be really great if we could get, like, a really specific use case that I can sort of wrap my head around more. Uh, so we, we came up with this general idea of a, a micro-learning use case for a coffee house uh, who is, who wants to provide an XR training to their employees to learn how to pull the perfect uh, espresso shot. And so, you know, in terms of this sort of use case, it would be, you know, how do you create a, either an AR, VR, you know, MR, <laughs> if you so choose, mm -hmm. uh, experience um, to then teach how to pull the a perfect cup of coffee or a perfect espresso shot. Uh, you may you may feel free, you know, as Tristy and Leslie had mentioned, to submit a design document, just sort of outlining, you know, the learning objectives, the design approach, any methodologies you might or frameworks that you might have built your design around, um, or you feel free to, you know, submit a, a pro like a, a a storyboard or even prototype. You're really ambitious, an actual app, but, but we actually don't expect that unless you really want to dedicate a lot of time to this design challenge. <laughs> mm <laughs> and you know, I think I just want to point out that you know best pack practices for designing XR haven't really been established yet in terms of mm -hmm. how to craft the right design document, like what we should include in a storyboard and stuff. And so I think by sharing each of our design approaches and you know, Re reviewing others, we can sort of co-create, you know, fi really find out what works in terms of design documentation and being able to pass off designs to, to devs or, you know, whomever. I think that we could, as a collective, be able to start to establish, you know, what what are those key things that we need to include in, in design documentation? How, what is the, you know, most effective way to communicate flow, like the flow of the entire experience? So that sort of stuff, uh, consideration, you know, design considerations. So we can sort of see these design challenges as a way for us to come together as a community and start developing, you know, sort of these best practices and seeing what works and, you know, best practices for us, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. It would be good to have a conversation that about that, actually, like, to, to brainstorm, like, what those best practices might look like. Like, yeah. I, that would be awesome if to have, like, some sort of mind map in spatial where we could, like, mm -hmm. over time build something like that. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think mm -hmm. about that a, a lot. I think about, like, as I'm, like, creating a course right now for VR, I'm just deciding things as I go along, what I think yeah. should mm -hmm. be done, what shouldn't, but um, it's always great to, like, talk with people about this. Yeah, that's Private a good idea. Is it, how many people are familiar with, or comfortable with GitHub? I know of yeah. it. I do not use it very okay. often. I like GitHub. <laughs> Getting I there. I use GitHub desktop. Okay. GitHub. That's a great way. I, I use the desktop version as well. 
but it's a great way you can create different branches and work on the same project without, um, how should I say, it, breaking. You don't, don't worry about breaking the whole mm -hmm. project. You can work out bits and pieces at a time. And then once you have your piece working, merge it together. That's what I'm going to work on my that with my students in the next 10 weeks. I'll test it out, see how it works, and share what I find. It's a learning oh, process. You. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use it myself. I've been a couple of years now, so I'm okay. rusty for I, sure. <laughs> I guess yeah, I would I just, just say up. jump in and like learn it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all about right. Like, or what do the universe class? Sorry, I think you cut out. So, throwing in a plug or take the universe world building class, you learn how to. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I it's true. Yep. Yeah. Maybe I'm making some assumptions right now, but what I think I'm hearing is um, moving forward. Maybe we think of this more as a collaborative exercise as opposed to like this. The way it's set up now is a little bit more on the competitive side. Um, but if we think about maybe coming up with a design challenge that whoever would like to join, like like um, establishing our own like sort of little design studio <laughs> or workshop where we kind of work together collaborati collaboratively um to kind of i think that yeah be and then yeah. In that way see, yeah go ahead Kimberly. i was going to say it would be nice to see some of the tools actually being used like so if someone is very familiar with using a particular tool i mean those of us who aren't actually developing in vr don't know what even what tool to start with so if somebody could say here's the ma the major tools that we work with and then somebody who's really good in a particular tool were to show how they would approach maybe you know like a, a design challenge of their of some type using it and then let people either pitch in or throw their ideas around and and basically watch a, a more experienced person do something in that space i don't know if that's possible on a shared screen but that would be super helpful for me because I'm my my idea is like I'm just in here to watch other people do stuff and then what wait till the till the um, I want to say till the industry matures enough where there's a version that's like the equivalent of Storyline 360 mm -hmm. but for VR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that like the common yeah, people can more use. out of the box yeah. you know mm -hmm. yeah like you know like get let let the industry kind of mature a little bit but in the meantime I would love to see some of the tools actually in action being used that would be super neat for me how the rest mm -hmm. of you and yeah. and not just the tools but actually um i think instructional designers or learning experience designers role in this part of the industry is more on the design yeah w is more heavily on design um mm -hmm. and, and answering some of those design questions in the way that you can then communicate it to someone who is more uh, who has a stronger development muscle. Let's put it that way. <laughs> we yes. we mm -hmm. have to develop our design muscles to be a little bit stronger and then mm -hmm. pass that off to someone who has a stronger development muscle. Not that those things can't um, overlap, but that they tend to be a little bit separate so far in my experience. Um, I think also being I'm able to look at what is even possible as we're getting more and more into instructional design in XR. Um, I think, too, like people who haven't had any experience in development might not understand like what you can actually accomplish in XR. So being able to have the chance to um, work together on a project would give us that chance to be able to see more of what's even possible in XR. <laughs> Mm 
Yeah, that's yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, sure. I, I might jump in to ask Crash one question about regarding the same topic that we we're discussing about how to design. So, Chris, if you don't mind, what was the process you were using when you were helping kids with the design stuff? Maybe we can borrow some of the stuff that Chris is already working with kids, and maybe we can use that to relearn our stuff as well because we're jumping in this new field of designing. Do you have any tools or storyboarding or prototyping stuff that you use? Well, for me, uh, how I set up the course was very similar. I mean, I borrowed a lot of ideas from Nicholas uh, Barone and Universe. So what I do, I use a lot of the tutorials on Unity Learn. So I'll do that. Um, when we're another thing that we do so far, and like I said, this is like I said, it's the first um, one through of the course, is, you know, we talk about doing a prototype. You can do uh, paper prototypes of what you want to want to do. Um, a lot of times when you're working in, in game development, you use gray boxing. So you start with simple shapes, and then you, then you work on the code to make those move around to see if you want to test to see if it's satisfying for the user. Yeah, you got to think about the user's needs in mind. I don't know if I'm getting in too deep on this, but um, so I would say, like, what what in particular are you looking in, into design? Are you learning? Are you are you worrying, wondering about how to get into XR development or creating um, an actual learning um, experience? I guess I was uh, trying to learn how you were like how you frame the design process before you actually jump into making whatever you want to teach for kids. Like, even like designing the virtual world that you were talking about, like Pulse Space. So is there like a separate session that you do with the brainstorming, coming up with the design, do they do in a 2D version? Like, you know, do they write some sort of document? How, like, I'm just trying to understand what's your process like. Of uh, building an all space world? Yeah, like more uh, from the design perspective, I guess. So trying to see if we can bring some of the parallels to even what we are doing here as a company, trying to learn a new tools for actually designing. Yeah. Um, for for us, uh, for I'll just talk about the Mesa Verde um, world that I did. When I went, I looked at it and I wanted to kept the end in mind first. So I thought, okay, I wanted to create an experience for my students that can't go anywhere, they don't have the means to go anywhere, and, and during the pandemic, they couldn't go anywhere. So I, I, I thought, okay, I looked into the curriculum, and we're studying the ancient Anasazi. So I thought, okay, so I'll look for a model of Mesa severity. So I, I found a decent one, and then I had to, you know, do some work with it to make it what I wanted, but then uh, I went from there. Uh, and I thought, okay, if you're visiting Mesa Verde, what do you want to know as a learner? What do I want my students to learn? Or if I was just to go there for the first time myself, you put yourself in the shoes of the user. So we do that a lot. There's um, one thing that I was going to share with the Elemental Tetrad. And that is also from this book, The Art of Game Design. It's actually, he talks about the design process and reiterate. So you come up with a design, you test along the way. And then you say, okay, this is this part is good. This part really wasn't so fun or it didn't grab your attention. It wasn't engaging. So then you just, okay, you re redesign that part. You just kind of build from there. Mm -hmm. okay. So you use a game design approach for designing XR world. Yeah, it's, it's really, yeah, I guess... I really look at things through the, the lens of a game designer, making, um, like I'm trying to design like um, an XR version of my multiple songs so the kids can actually have a main hub where they 
can branch off into different rooms, different um, activities for each of the multiple songs. So, but uh, to look at it through the through the eyes of a designer, just let me look at my notes for a second. So, and the four things of the elemental tetrad are mechanics story, aesthetics, and technology. So you can kind of go through those where technology would be the least visible to your mm -hmm. user, and mechanics and gameplay. So what abilities you want your user to have when they go through your experience. So I kind of look at it that way. And then you also want to, I looked into, um, I mean, this is also mentioned in the game design book, but there's uh, Ed Edward Desi and Richard Ryan they have something called self-determination theory, and that's mental needs. So you kind of predict what your users will want. So there's confidence. Mm -hmm. They want to feel good at something. So when you're mm -hmm. creating your design, you want them to be successful, but you also want it to be challenging because you also want to uh, have problem solving involved. And then also autonomy, they need to kind of have freedom to do things their own way. So you're kind of trying to have to build it open-ended. That's my take on it. And this part, I, I'm not, uh, I'm working on trying to have multiplayer too, but relatedness and connecting with others. Those are kind of the lenses I look through when I'm creating something. Mm -hmm. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing that insight. I guess we just need to read that book, I guess. I think I'm going to read that book. And read <laughs> I, can't, I can't recommend it enough. Fantastic. <laughs> I heard, I heard I about this that. book, right? Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, I, I will say that the game design lens when designing for XR is very, very helpful because that's actually the lens that I tried to bring into designing for VR experiences as well. Um, so, so if I could suggest more reading, <laughs> more books uh, to, to add to your reading list, um, one of them is... Uh, by Jim G, um, James Paul G, what video games have to teach about learning and literacy. I think that mm. that's a really fun game. Um, Rules of Play, I think, is like the Bible. <laughs> um, Rules and of Play. And then there's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rules of Play, um, Kaylee, Katie Shalen and uh, Zimmerman, I forgot his first name. <laughs> uh, and then... Kristen, can you share these then, on... Or yes, Slack? definitely. Thank and you. then a theory of fun of game design. I want to say, or like, for for me, like those sort of laid the foundation for um, what for for really how I approach immersive design. Um, but I will say, I've been wanting to read that book uh, by Jesse Shell, and it's been on my reading list for so long. Now I feel like I need to buy it because, <laughs> um, you know, I, I just loved everything you've said about it so far, and it's now it's now I'm just sold. Yeah, me too. Big part of my there? approach to, to building the lab, but like, check out Kristen. Check out those free um, the free app. You can oh, check yeah. out all the lenses. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's worth it. Very cool. But if you want more in depth, of course, you know, go with the book. Nice. I feel they're. Definitely one of the same, like, as far as game design goes and instructional design as well. I mean, especially if you're thinking about just XR in general, VR, they are the same. I mean, if you think about it, basically, like, all the technology is based on um, game engines for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, like, that means, like, Unity is used. I went, I went to, like, a webinar recently, and they said, like, 50% of the simulation that are being built for education are building 50%. So that means, um, you know, either they're based on Unity or like it's highly tailored to for each company on top of that technology mm -hmm. already. So mm -hmm. it's, it's essentially the same if you think about it. Like it, even this experience we're in right now is, is sort of like a game. It's based on 3, three technology, 3D three models, mm -hmm. and some game mechanics like adventure games or whatever or point and click adventure games. And that's kinda how I, I came into the space actually. I, I had had a huge passion for those kind of games and when I was um younger and so forth. And um I realized that they can actually teach you stuff too when you're playing them. So like I'm talking about like immersive sim kind of games where you're 
-hmm. like wandering around through like an environment and picking up items and putting in them into your inventory. It, it's pretty much exactly the same. It's like the, the VR experiences that you go through. Um, either like 3D or, or VR experiences, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of the mechanics are the same. So it really comes down to like, you can blend these two, like game design mechanics as well as instructional instructional design mechanics as well. Um, and that, that kind of kind of sounds like the points that are acquired and so forth and like your proficiency with learning and so mm -hmm. forth, like the percentages is so a lot of these things blend together and it, it's really nice to think about it that way. Um, it's really kind of the natural way I think of thinking about these things actually. So, but also I wanted to like actually add something to uh, about the um, technology side of things. The, I, I would really, really encourage people to like really look into Unity. Um, just download it and like it's, it's free basically. Download for free uh, and like just make your own game in it. So that's kind of what I've been doing for the last few years or so is building my own game to see like what possible with this technology and kind of kind of familiar, familiar with my, my myself with what's possible in the engine so I can kind of go back and forth between like developers like uh, not really a developer but I, I can actually speak to developers really pretty clearly about things that are possible you know and um, mm -hmm. I don't know I think that kind of is really helpful for for VR stuff <laughs> it fits right in with the, uh, yeah, it's like the camping, you know? <laughs> yeah. Dark. And I also recommend um, there's a company called GameDev.tv. Mm -hmm. like television um hmm. and they have a lot of really great courses that are really inexpensive like an entire um course on building games in unity or in unreal engine is like 35 dollars so and game they do, TV? yeah one? game dev dot tv and i'll post it into our slack too there's another one that keeps popping up on my Facebook that's Game Dev HQ. That is not it. Not it. Okay. That one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that was it, and I 
jumped in because I saw something and they did like this spiel and I think it's like a five thousand dollar program or something crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Don't do that one. <laughs> Game Dev TV oh. is really inexpensive and um, I like British accents. They all have British accents. So it's <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, but they have a lot of stuff. They have like Blender. They have. Um, Unreal Engine, they have Unity, they have just tons of stuff on there. Cool. <laughs> well, I'm going to say my headset's about to die, so yeah, I, I just got a message have too. to say good night yeah, to everybody. But this was really, really, yeah. really um, a nice meetup. It was good to see familiar faces and new faces. And thank you, Chris, for again for coming and sharing what you know. Of course, um, thank you. And everyone for your feedback about the design challenge. I think that gives us a lot to think about about how we can structure it um, moving mm -hmm. forward. So, yeah, more to come on that. But thank you for that feedback. It was really valuable. Thank you. This was Thanks, right, thank everyone. You, everybody. <laughs> okay. Is there a, is there a, right. is there a space? Oh. Good night. Sorry. What, right. what, Chris? Is, is there a space where we can exchange LinkedIn um, and connect in, on LinkedIn? Or should we do that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Great. Good All morning. Right, All right. Thanks. Good night. Yeah. Thanks. Right, good night. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Of course. See you guys the next Bye. time. Bye. 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 B